So we have a really big weekend ahead of us. The concrete check is coming on Monday, so we have to get all of the forms for the pier footers up and ready to go before he gets here. There's quite a bit of work to get done ahead of us. So basically how this is gonna go is we need to get everything marked and squared for where the footers are gonna go. We need to get all of the rebar cut, the holes drilled, the sauna tube cut, all of the rebar pounded into the ground, sauna tube put on top, and then the supports to go around the sauna tube put up. It sounds pretty easy when I just lay it out like that, but it's actually gonna be quite a bit of work. So we need to get started. We've gotta get all of this done no matter how long it takes or else we're not gonna be ready when the concrete truck comes on Monday. But before we can get going, we've gotta head down to the barn, get all of our material, all of our tools. We're gonna to bring everything up here to the house site, plug into the generator, and just do all of our prefab work up here. We're gonna have three rows of nine footers. Each of the footers is going to be 18 inches wide and it's going to go four feet down. The two outer rows of the footers, we're gonna have the concrete truck pour the entire form. For the center row, the concrete truck is only gonna pour the bottom four feet up to ground level. Once everything cures, Josh and I are gonna come back in and we are going to mix and pour the top center row of footers. The reason that we're doing it this way is so that the truck can fit all the way through and get the majority of the forms. We wouldn't be able to work it for him to get through and also pour the center row for the top two feet, so we're just gonna go ahead and take care of that. We chose to have a concrete truck come out here and do the work for us because once we ran the numbers and did the math, it actually turned out to be less expensive to have a concrete truck come out here, deliver and pour all of the concrete rather than for us to mix it and do it ourselves. This is a really big step for us because after we've got these in and everything has cured, we're gonna be able to get started on the actual bill. Never fear, my friends. You will no longer have to wonder which one of us has the better driving record. <laughs> We're making sure we have the right angle of this house to get the best view possible. We only got one chance to do this right. We're trying to determine how the angle of the roof is going to affect the view of the mountain range and whether or not we need to tweak where we have it or not. The best idea is to go ahead and take that A, stand it up, and get a quick look through it. This is a simple mock-up of the A we put together with lid screws. The actual A will be put together with bolts and spaced 16 inches on center. We are both going to take turns studying the A while the other one steps back to make sure that the view is ideal for what will eventually be our living room.
Now that we have the placement for our view, what we're going to do is drive the stakes for the corners of the house. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and do the 3, 4, 5 method to go ahead and make this house square. In order to make the 3, 4, 5 method work, you got to take the length of the house and multiply it by itself. This will be 48 feet times 48 feet. That gives us 2,304. Then we take the width of the house, which is 24 feet. This is going to be 24 times 24, which gives us 576. We take those two numbers, we add them together, which gives us 2,880. Once we have that number, we need to find the square root of that number. The square root of that number would be 53.66. So you take that 53.66, and what we're going to do is pretty much make a triangle with it. We've got our north and south lines established. We're going to come from the north line and go west, which will go 24 feet. And from the south line, we're going to come up and go 53.66. We've got to work those tape measures so they intersect. And the 24 foot intersects at 53.66. That's how we know we're square, and that's where we drive that corner post. So we have everything measured out and we are all square. We drove a post at each of the four corners and now we are going to get the mason line out, wrap around each of the posts to form a full rectangle, and then we're going to follow the line down and drive a post every six feet. That's where each footer is going to go. So then we'll get out some spray paint, spray paint where each of those footers is going to be at, where the post is marking, pull the post out, get the auger out, and start drilling. You're a straight line. I've got my stakes. of number four rebar at 20 foot lengths. Josh cut each of these down into four foot lengths and we're gonna use these to go into our pole bases. So we're gonna put five of these in each of our pole bases and we have 27 total pole bases to put these into. The reason why we bought them at 20 foot lengths rather than at the four foot length, which we could have done, is because it would have more than doubled our price. So we were able to cut on costs by buying them at the 20 foot lengths and having Josh take the extra time to cut them down to what we needed. Now it's time to measure and cut so that we can build the forms for our sonotube. Now that we've got the majority of our prefab work done, we can start getting these holes drilled.
Josh has the auger going. He's going down four feet and 18 inches wide. Every now and then, um, I go over there just to measure and check for depth to see where we're at. He's pulling out as much dirt as he can just to get it out of the way. So we're basically on repeat here, guys. We've got 27 of these holes to get drilled, and then we can move on. Let's speed this up a bit, shall we? So the basic idea is, once we get all four of these corners up, we're gonna go ahead and get the anchor bolts put in. Um, once we get these four anchor bolts put in, we'll go ahead and square, we'll square them all up so everything's nice and square. Once we get it all squared up, what we'll do is pull a jet line from this base down to that base. What that will signify is the straight line for the anchor bolts. Also, it's going to give us a height of each and every one of these bases right here. Um, once we get this row done, we'll come back on that side, do the same exact thing. We get ready to pour concrete on Monday. This is a survey laser. We're using this to establish the height of the footers. To be as efficient as possible, we're going to lay out all the forms and rebar next to each of the holes. Some of the rebar is going to get tied together for the deeper holes, and the shorter pieces of rebar are going to go in as the concrete is poured. going to be slid on top of each piece of sonotube, screwed into the sides. Then we'll place the sonotube in the holes and adjust it for the proper height using the level. We, yeah, we... Once we hear the solid beep, we know we're at the right height. Now we will pound in each of these stakes to support the sonotube form and keep it at the proper height. Aaron works to level out each side, I screw in the forms.
basically just need to repeat those steps for each sauna tube. Looking good so far. We are on to day three now. More sauna tube needs to be cut. More forms need to be attached to the sauna tube. And more wood needs to be cut to hold the anchor bolts. It's really crunch time for us right now. We've got the concrete truck coming at three and we have no time to waste. Luckily, we've really gotten into a good flow with this, so I think we'll be just fine. Josh is getting the rebar in the last few of these forms and I'm laying out the wood for the anchor bolts so that Josh can start drilling and I can start attaching the anchor bolts. Once the beams for the house get laid, the anchor bolts will secure them. So this is it, we are all set up and ready to go. Our concrete forms are poured, everything's supported. We just finished and we're minutes away from the concrete truck pouring up. So we have one, two, three rows of 18 inch wide concrete footers that are gonna be going in. We were so fortunate to have some dear friends of ours from the community show up unexpectedly to help us out with the concrete pour today. Charlie and Josh worked so well together and had a great vibe going on so I just stepped back and let them do their work. There's not much pitch on that chute, so I'm going to use that fiber to get the concrete moving. Using the vibrator to get the air pockets out of the concrete so when I tear the forms down, it's a nice finished product. The guys would go from one side to the other, filling each sauna tube, and then finish with the center one. Once again, on repeat, fill each of the 27 sauna tubes. Once the concrete pour was completed, the wood holding the anchor bolts in place was removed, and the concrete was smoothed out and finished.
concrete has cured and now it's time to get these forms off. That's it, that's right, put your back into it. Okay, so what we got going on here? Make sure things square, that's all we're doing. We're gonna go across this way. Measuring at 53.6. You got that right there, it means this whole thing's gonna be square. So, that's all. Alright, uh, so we measured from corner to corner. We're within a quarter inch on both sides. So, well, it's 53.6 feet. Within a quarter inch, that's good enough to be in square. Concrete on my face, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if we really even feel like making a video right now. Not really. <laughs> that was kind of rough. Today was our uh, final concrete pour for the center row of pier footers. Um, the weather was supposed to hold out for us. Everything did not go as planned, and we had torrential downpours. Beep. Monsoon. Okay, <laughs> I'll beep that out. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a monsoon. Uh, right before the concrete truck was due to arrive. This was definitely gonna be a problem for us because he was not gonna be able to make it up the steep turn past the barn. Um, he got here, he couldn't make it up. Josh had to take the tractor down and fill up bucket after bucket of concrete into the tractor, drive the tractor up here and then shovel it out. By um, hand. By hand, yes. Eventually, I don't know, after but what, like three or four of them maybe, the concrete truck was able to pull up. Mm -hmm to the house site, but not all the way up. Still use a tractor. He yeah. wouldn't come to the house site because he think it's gonna sink. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then when, once we got down to the very last one, of course the skies opened up again. This time we had like lightning bolts coming down, mm -hmm. <laughs> pouring. Not sure whether or not the final pier footer is A lot of water, it should be survive. fine. There's a lot of water got into it. We'll see how it looks when I tear it down tomorrow. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> yep. We're, we're done for now. If you like our videos, be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Thanks, guys.